some settle for life as a pet. But others get a field job. For canines with a career in search and rescue, it pays to report for duty wearing paws. Portable, all-terrain, wireless solution. It's upgraded gear that's changing crisis response. There was an issue with the other equipment that was already on the market. What was happening was that they were using low-grade wireless solutions and as they went behind obstacles such as a fallen wall or a tunnel, the signal would turn off. So they took an existing technology and made it better. The innovation is the wireless. We can actually work through uh, rough terrain, we can work in tunnels, we can work semi-underground to probably 20 metres underground. So when searching for somebody after an earthquake or a fallen building, our equipment will keep the signal live. That's great news for a dog like Byron. He's a purebred border collie who's worked in hundreds of disasters around the world. It takes about two years to train a rescue dog to get him qualified for this work. In March of last year, he went to Japan for the tsunami, worked for three days in some of the most devastated areas. That more than qualifies Byron to test out the PAWS prototype. And what we would hope to do is to refine it so that we can match it for the different dog types. Which means a custom-made suit for every dog. Good. First thing that Byron is wearing on his head is an IR camera which illuminates in the dark so that we can get shots of daylight and obviously as we go through tunnels and covered areas. There's a control panel which allows us to see whether the equipment switched on before we send the dog in for the search. The main transmitter with its antenna, which is what transmits the signals back to the receive station. We have a voice pack which allows the microphone and speaker to be put into operation. That's how it functions, but it can be a tough fit. The challenges have been fitting the equipment to the dog. The head harness has been something that has taken some delicate uh, refinement. Obviously the dogs aren't used to having cameras on their head or the harness on their back, so it's just a matter of a bit of training, familiarisation with the dog, so he becomes used to the weight and the feel of the equipment. On the opposite end of things... Here we have a pelly case that arrives on the scene. It has a main screen for viewing, an auxiliary screen so other operators can see what's going on, a receiver with diverse antennas so that you can get the maximum signal strength through there, a transmitter so you can talk to the dog and a speaker so you can hear what the dog's doing. All dressed up, it's time to test this puppy on a simulated earthquake site. Okay, Byron's mission today is a training exercise and we're going to bury someone in the rubble. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll send Byron in with a camera. Voice of search dog, anybody hear me? Come on, go find your team. Go, wait, find. Who are we? And we'll hopefully see the casualty. The dogs will penetrate sometimes quite a way into a building where we can't go as humans. Away! Good! Way fine! To get a live feed of the problems outside is massively important. Even in this tunnel, the wireless is getting the image across. And no wires means the fire can move freely. Looks like a dead end, but Byron is not giving up. Get up! Good! Up! Good lad, right? Eventually, he hits the jackpot. With his part done, Byron turns the task over to a human. Transmitter is transferred to the fire officer, and the fire officer will continue to demonstrate how the video can assist in the rescue. Hi, oh, mate. Tell me your name, please. Nick. Nick, are you injured at all, Nick? Yes. We're going to get you out of here as soon as we can. It won't be long. The rescue team did well, but how did the technology do? Still got work to do with getting used to the harness, uh, and obviously I've got to do something about the hair in front of the camera, but a bit of brill cream will sort that out, hopefully. But other than that, really pleased with him, and uh, it's hopefully this technology will come on in leaps and bounds. Go get to it, come on. And as for Byron, it's time to rest before it's back to working like a duck. Good boy. 